Hey kings and queens, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Nicole. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you're new, please welcome. Today I'll be doing another interview with another raw vegan, Delilah. Please check out her information in the description below. Make sure you go follow her and check out her book. She's an author. She's a physical trainer. Um, without further ado, let's just get into the interview. And here's Delilah. How are you? Uh I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at, had a hell of a day. I've been, you know, I had a, a food prep class and I had to teach a yoga class. So you're the last person on my schedule. So I'm excited about this. Look at you. You're busy, busy, but <laughs> um, it's nice to meet you. Oh, nice to be, you know, nice to meet you too. Nice to meet I, you. I feel like I know you more because I've been watching your YouTube for a while now versus you just found out about me this week when I reached out. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, you know, that's just true. So let me ask you something, just out of mere curiosity. Um, what attracted you to watch our channel? Just out of, just trying to get some feedback. Uh, are you referring to your YouTube, your personal YouTube? Uh, both. Um, I more so watch your YouTube um, and I watch your sisters um, as well sometimes. Um, I'm just really into the raw vegan lifestyle. So I always find, you know, go to YouTube and search. And then I'm more attracted to when you're a black raw vegan, right? Because that's, <laughs> it's not common. It's not common. Yeah. And, you know, um, I'm not, I'm not completely raw. I have, I have seasons where I'll eat more cooked foods and then I won't want that anymore. And then I'll want just raw or high raw. So I'm at that stage right now where I just want high raw, but I'm always just attracted to hearing people's stories and their journeys. And um, I'm very inspired by the lifestyle and just taking care of your health. So I came across, I don't remember when I came across your channel, but I know it's been a while and I know I binge watched your YouTube channel. <laughs> and, um, um, and I also like that you cover the menopause or the perimenopause because yeah. Yeah. I'm per I'm perimenopausal and I ain't feeling that. <laughs> but it's yeah. nice to be able to see other people that are experiencing that and how you know maybe their diet helps. Yeah, you know, helps it from getting the way it can be. But yeah, I just I'm always interested in people's journeys and um, and then I found your Facebook group and I actually haven't seen it in a while. And I came across it again last week. It just kind of popped up. And I'm like, oh, I forgot about this one. Yeah. So that's when I reached out to you. Because I was like, oh, I forgot they had a channel because I haven't seen it pop up. Right, right, right. right. We, used to time. we used to, um, but we had went, uh, we had so much work. Then we started getting a lot of online clients. So we couldn't yeah. really... And Sunday became like the Sabbath for us. We needed some time to, to you know, decompress from working with clients. Yeah. Oh, a lot. And you're dealing with energy. You, you have to really take into consideration that you're giving a lot that you got to pull back for yourself. So yeah. it was self-care. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm appreciating that. I just, I love it. I love it. I love your lifestyle. I love, I love that you <laughs> are not just raw vegan, but you like, you work out, you have a nice physique, you got muscles, which proves that obviously you get enough protein, but anyway, <laughs> but let me, um, so how, I think I know this answer, but how long for the viewers, how long have you been raw? And then what made you decide to go raw? Because, um, were you plant-based first and then went to raw or did you go from uh, meat eating to raw? Question. Good question. I actually wanted to be a bodybuilder. So I got into fitness first. Um, and I was eating the protein, the meat, the egg whites, and all of the protein, mm. all the stuff, six meals a day, uh, going to the vitamin shop, getting amino acids, and walking around with met racks and all that other stuff, bench, you know, all of that. Um, I got into it purely due to my health. I had gotten fibroids and tumors. Mm. And um, while I was eating the meat, I decided to say, hey, let me check on vegan. Let me try to, let me go vegan and stop eating the meat. Um, then the, I was at my heaviest when I was vegetarian, um, mm -hmm. I was bloated. I had, I was, and to be honest with you, I was not, I was vegetarian by label, but I was more of a starchitarian because I wasn't eating fruits and vegetables, but in my mind, because I wasn't eating meat made me, made me vegetarian, but I was eating pasta, pizza. Yeah. I was eating a lot of the, 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 the 
vegetarian food, um, processed vegetarian food. And I was at my heaviest when I was eating processed vegetarian, more heavy than when I was eating meat, you know, mm. and I was bloated. I had a lot of bloat, even when I was lifting weights, the, the food, the, it just, it wasn't working um, for me. Yeah. Um, so I end up due to the fibroids and everything, uh, my sister, um, introduced me to the raw vegan lifestyle. Now I got to make the distinction. And I got to say, as a person who, um, have had many diets and for me, a diet is like temporary. So when yeah. I hear somebody, they're going to do it for a number of days and then they're going to go back to the stuff that they was having the diet for. Yeah. So they want to make, so I'm going to go on a diet. So I'm going to do this for two weeks, lose the weight. Then I'm going to go back to eating right. the same and then maybe next year I'll do the same thing. So it was like it was like 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 a rat running in a cage trying to reach his own tail, and you never really get it. And I kind of got into like Monsanto's, the whole food politics, the food desert, the manipulation of the of the taste buds, and how big businesses is making money off of people's naive being naive, and that really pissed me off. So I got deep into the the politics of food. Yeah. So I who the big players was like Monsanto's, the manipulation, the tests that they do on people with salt, sugar, fat, the, the uh, semantics with diet and fat free and the calorie gain. It, it's all really, um, it's a game, you know, it's a spiraling game. And I think people are not aware of what part they're playing in their, in this manipulation. And they're used pretty much as consumers because mm -hmm cheap material. I mean, they're using cheap ingredients to keep you sick. And right. the reason why people are sick is because they're eating food that's not nutritionally dense and they're eating a lot of calories and they're putting on weight and they wonder why they have type two diabetes. Mm. Children are dying and parents are burying their children based on the consumption um, and the overweight. Children are more overweight now than ever before. 40% yeah. of uh, American children are overweight. Um, 11 million people alone in the States die of, of bad food. 11 million people die wow. of food. That's yeah, so it's a, I, I started taking it personal, also taking into consideration, I grew up in a community, you know, being on public assistance, coming from a single parent, mother who had me at 15, watching my community die. And then I, I, I grew up in an in a era back in the 80s when they was having crack and they had oh, crack cocaine come in the neighborhood. I watched my, my people die of, of, of religion, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to say it, the politics of the manipulation of the religion, the, the, the Caucasian Jesus Christ, um, the bodegas, the, alcohol, the liquor stores, churches, churches, bodegas, liquor stores, and crack. So that was the and, and food deserts, redlining. Um, it, it was, and, and, and bottom line is that it was planned. And I basically took it personal because it was people like me that was dying, and we were the uh -huh. target. Yeah. So it, it, it became, and also if you think about post-traumatic slave syndrome, and if you think about the manipulation of us in our genetic tissue, how much trauma we have in the food that we're eating is only triggering the trauma. And I see relationships between men and women. I see my mom had me at 15, don't know who my father is. I see uh, the manipulation. I see how this plays into the divine plan of the bigger of, of government. So it's more than what you're putting in your mouth, food mm. is political. And whether you want to admit it or not, um, people are being set up. And that's where I come in. Um, I can't compete with lobbyists and I can't compete with big companies um, that's selling this food, subliminal messages to children on TV and getting them you know, through their devices and, tra and trauma and their taste buds and making their taste buds addicted to salt, sugar, fat. Yeah. Uh, but for them to, and if I could just get their parents and have them just, just explore, because I have a book, The Seven Day Raw Vegan Challenge, and a yeah. lot of people of color have been purchasing it. And a lot of people have said to me, I've heard of vegan, but I didn't like it. Even brothers, because I go to the gym, yo, I didn't want to you know, do that because they look like crackheads. A lot of brothers be like, yo, I'm not trying to lose weight like that. And a lot of sisters just didn't see themselves in the people. So a lot of people tried it, lost weight, the medication went down. People thanked me. Even to yesterday night, I was hanging with my brother and I got a letter from this woman that said, thanks to you, they, my medication went down in one week. She's been, her, her whole life has changed. 
and she's oh, adding awesome. vegetables and she's sharing that with her children The children are eating the food because the food is good. Yeah. So it's a big, it's a big part of my life. It's something that, um, I, I believe in, and I believe for me that this is something that I'm going to do to the day I transition. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all that. Um, and you actually kind of touched on one of my other questions, which was not going to be for another couple of questions, but <laughs> to, you are, I know that you're an author. I know that you're a coach and a physical tr trainer. So um, I know that you said your book is the seven day raw challenge. So mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about your book. Talk to me about your, um, you know, what you do as a fit, well, physical trainer, obviously you help people get in shape, but just talk to me a little bit about that whole aspect, the, the book, the training, um, you already kind of touched on some of your testimonials from some of your clients, but just touch on that a little bit more. Well, for me, it was pretty much um, being part of the solution. I think about Gandhi, Gandhi's one of my favorite um, mentors. Um, if you want change, you have to be that change. So yeah. growing up in a community um, that, was, that was challenging uh, in a food desert, um, I noticed a lot of us dying and getting sick and also a lot of us turning on each other and how our lives didn't matter. It, it was a shootout and I grew up in neighborhoods where you know it was normal. And that's also traumatizing as a child. And even me going to school and getting my college degree, you know, it wasn't people, a lot of people really didn't support that. They was, you know, cause they had a death wish. And a lot of people, when you grow up in the hood, um, you're not expected to live past a certain age. So you kind of wild out. So you, you play into that role because you don't have a sense of, 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 of belonging. You don't see yourself in a bigger picture. So I used to spend some time at the library. I was also an athlete. I did track and field when I was a kid. The only thing that made me feel good about my life really was running, was running. And, and spiritual thing for me because I was running from something. And even when, when, I, when, when I used to uh, Colgate, back in the days, I used to have to Colgate back in the days in the hood, and they would bring us in buses. And we would run against other people who had a lot of money. And a lot of times in, in communities, well, well flu, affluent communities. And when I felt so good when people say, and I used to get the trophy and I was like, you know what? I want to feel like this all the time. So that's how I got into fitness. It's because yeah. of how for means and how it made me feel. I felt yeah. I was loved. I felt like I was important. And I felt like my life mattered because I got a trophy and mm -hmm. I did something that was positive that, that I'm not a bad person. You know, I'm not going to die at 30. I'm not going to end up in jail, you know? So it really made me want to live. So I always loved, um, as far as fitness, that has always been my calling, always. And as far as the book, um, how the book came about was, uh, I wasn't going to write the book. I was just doing a seven day raw vegan challenge. Now I do the seven day raw vegan challenge um, every January. Because of New Year's resolutions, people always want to either detox because they've been Christmas, right. Thanksgiving, <laughs> then you got New Year's Day. So everybody wants to do it right after they finish drinking the alcohol. They want to get their last drink on. <laughs> right. They'll say, <laughs> they'll say well, right, let me drink it now. Let me get, get the kettle one. Let me drink it right now. Let me get it out because I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this no more. So a lot of right. people. I think January 1st. <laughs> And so that January 1st is when everybody's like, yo, I'm, I'm going to kick this habit. And, and what happens with that is that people, um, change is not easy. It's a process. Change is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take some people several times to get it. And um, it's a preparation. So for me, I wanted to, um, and people started following me on, on, um, on TikTok. I got 187K people. And, they, and I used to make smoothies and I was always using sea moss. And I was always talking about flaxseed and people, you know, would say, yo, I heard about sea moss, but what is, what is it? So I started doing shows on sea moss and I started, people would ask me, yo, are you selling it? Do you know anybody that's selling it? Now I can get it here in Belize. It's all over. But people were like, well, can you mail some? And even some of the herbs, because I also grow food. See, it's, the thing about it is that it's a lifestyle. It's it not is. like I eat, like if I'm eating real food, I'm growing food. Like in my garden, I got tomatoes, I got banana trees, I got coconut trees, I got kale that I'm growing. So I usually go from garden to table. Now, it wasn't always like that. I came from, my mother was on welfare, had me at 15 
and we ate welfare food and all that other stuff. So my thing is that it took me years to get to this point and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Mm -hmm. it, 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 me to leave the States six years ago and never come back. Um, it was a process, but even me starting to eat fruit, vegetables, and investigating due to my health and having fibroids and tumors um, and making a conscious choice not to get a hysterectomy because the doctors was like, you know, they're big, we gotta cut you. And mm. I was like, let me get a second opinion. So I sat and talked to my sister and she felt my stomach one night when I was crying, when I was sleeping and we started crying holding my stomach. And I said, I don't know, no, I might die on the table, you know? And I was like, wow. man, we started together and it was like it was so traumatizing because how many black women got fibroids oh, you know a lot of us yeah. and i was like oh, i don't know i said i don't know and she said let's not do it let's find another way and so we used the food and when we did the food we went raw the food healed me it dissolved wow. it disappeared so it, so it made the, the fibroids disappeared yeah it dissolved in a year and a half it was wow. gone because if i would have went and got the fibroids um cut this is the problem because we only deal with the symptoms we don't deal with the root so we right. put a band-aid so if i would have gotten cut um it would have grew back you know why it would have grew back because i didn't change my eating consumption and my relationship with food so the same habits that i had that got the fibroids is mm -hmm. going to come back because I deal with the root of why so when we put a band-aid on things okay you got a band-aid but then you never dealt with the why. So I had to go back um, and deal with my emotional state from mm. trauma from childhood. Now, a lot of us don't talk about as children being mishandled. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, due to trauma, drug, when you eat pizza and you've been molested or something happened to you in your, and, and you, and you kind of eat it because you don't tell nobody nothing, we hold a lot of secrets in the Black community. And we too embarrassed to tell people yeah. what's going on. So we're, we're walking... And a lot of us are trauma bonding and mm -hmm. we eat food. So you're eating, you're traumatized, whatever happened to you from your childhood, but you're walking around. Now you're eating McDonald's food. That's not feeding the brain. It's not nurturing you. You're having conversations with, with people who are eating processed food. You guys are like violence in the neighborhood. The children are picking up that. So it's a repeated cycle. And we, we keep thinking that this is cute. We're listening to the music, the music. Now, when we talk about food, we talk about the stuff that goes in our mouth. We right. don't talk. Food is also the sounds you hear, the yeah. visions, everything coming in your, it's not, yeah. And so for me, when I started eating the food, when I started eating the food, it started to make sense to me. Why are you just eating the food, but you're listening to music that's derogatory towards women and you think it's cute? Right. Why do you, you might as well have a steak because that's what you're listening to. Yeah. And, 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 and my temple. So my, my temple doesn't just consist of what goes in my mouth. It consists yeah. of what goes into my ears you know, and how I'm living in this world. So it's not, and that's why I say the raw vegan, uh, for me, I, I can honestly say the raw vegan is not a diet. It's a it's lifestyle. A lifestyle. It's, it's, how, it's how you deal with people, how you treat yourself, how you treat other people, how you feed your temple, how you mm -hmm. move, what music you listen to, your vibe. It's a, it's a, it's a vibe and thing. Yes. Thank you for saying that. Cause it's not just about what you put in your mouth. It's about what you surround yourself around, everything. what you're looking at, what you're listening to, everything. who you're hanging around with, all of it plays a part. Everything. Uh, yeah, thank you for touching on that. Mm -hmm. Woo! I mean, the goosebumps. Um, so as a, as a raw vegan, tell me about some of the benefits. And also another question is, did you experience detox when you first went raw? I know it's been a while, so I don't know if you remember, yeah. but... <laughs> When I first got into it, because I was eating, and I actually thought I was eating healthy when I was being vegetarian, because mm -hmm. I was at a health food store, and I would come out, spend $200 with one bag. Hmm. So I, I was, you know, and I do dig it. I agree when people say, oh, you know, I can't go vegetarian and snack because it's too expensive. I agree, because I couldn't afford it with the patties, the fried packs, the fake burgers, the fake yeah. chicken, fake cheese, the fake this. The fake, 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 fake. So, and also eating a lot of that processed fake food, it's like the devil just came through the back door. And a lot of the meat companies own a lot of those fake burgers. You didn't know that. And a lot of the cheese, the 
He's yeah, they because they because they know. They know, they know, they know. And the food, if you if you eat the fake burger, it's coming from a factory. It's not coming like it's not like um this yeah. is this this didn't come from a factory. This has water, fiber, yeah. nutrients, it has fiber. The stuff yeah. that vegetarians are vegetarians are eating, they're eating bread, they're eating spaghetti, pasta, flour, flour, yeah. flour. They're not this came off of a tree. This came bananas. I got some bananas. I got some coconut with some coconut water. It has electrolytes. It has magnesium. It has chlorophyll, mm. copper. It has everything the body needs to sustain life yeah. energy. And, and you have to ask yourself when you're eating, is this giving me life or is it taking life away from me? That's what I'm saying. So every time I eat food, I think to myself, am I killing myself? Is, is this mm. going to hurt? Or is this going to, because this has burnt Berlin, Berlin um, and it has an enzyme that helps break down amino acid. It helps the body digest food. When you eat food that's fake and that's processed, it sucks life energy from you. So it's, so you're aging faster hmm. because it's pulling water from you. Wow. So this is giving water back to you. It's giving living water. Very living hydrating. Water. Yeah. And it has the minerals and vitamins in it. Mm -hmm. It's not stagnant and dead. It's real living enzyme for a real living body. Also, American doctors don't really know anything about nutrition. They don't. They know, like if you've been hit by car trauma, they know how to cut you open because they've been dealing with dead energy. They've been dealing with cadavers. They go and they deal with dead, dead bodies. They don't deal with living spirit. We are of spirit. A lot of times when people are sick, if they're in a bad mood or if, they're, if they feel depressed, um, it shuts down the organs. Depression can kill you. Stress can kill you. Yes, and can. people say, hey, you know, how did this person die? They was unhappy. Mm -hmm. And they kind of wished themselves to death. We don't understand the power of energy. We don't understand how our energy, as far as us being energy in this avatar, because this body's going to die. I'm not going to be here that long. But you cannot kill energy. So I will always my energy will always be here and i think a lot of us have have just given up and oh i'm gonna die. you're gonna die of something anyway so why are you eating that because you're gonna just die you might want to sit here and have this weed because i grew up in the hood you might want to smoke this weed and just get down with this and yo let's just get with it and get some tims and 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 bottom line is that we're dying and a lot of us are amen in it and i'm a little disappointed with a lot of the churches in the neighborhood because I know when I was growing up, they used to feed us fried chicken in, in, in the rectory room right after church. Mm -hmm. I grew up in hostel and we shout, shanta mashenta. Meanwhile, somebody's having a heart, heart attack getting the Holy Spirit and big mama is 300 pounds and she has to go to the doctor because, you know, we got the prayer list because, you know, this person is in, in the hospital. We got to pray for this person. So we, we constantly okay with people being in the hospital. That has become the new normal. We're not saying like, let's get this food together. Let's get the exercise. Sister, sister, so and so, can you do the aerobics class at the rectory yeah. room on Monday night? We're not using the rectory room to say, let's get the exercise, sisters, and let's get the children involved. You know, let's get the food. The children, or kids, are you growing? Is it, you know, let's grow some of this food. Let's get some of these tomatoes. Let's let the children understand where the food is coming from. You know, yeah. we're not doing we making somebody else rich by getting the latest Tim's. We're gonna we wanna look cute when we go to church. We're gonna get some extensions in our hair. We're gonna get some fake nails and we're gonna eat some fake food, have a mm -hmm. fake conversation with fake people. Right. That's dying. Because the people that's supposed to be leading ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing. Right. It's all in the food, man. It's, it's all in the food. It's killing us. Food. That 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 food out there is killing us, and we gotta change our ways of eating. The food is just the portal. It's just the, it's, it's, it's more than just the food. It's because a the portion. Food, it's a portion. Yeah, just, it's just, a, it's just the, because the fish rots from the head. Because once you got that, you got everything. Because mm -hmm. now everything will follow. Yeah. You know, and I think until we get some people who is about it, who stop worshiping that money, who start putting some seeds in the ground and telling children, take your power back. Go on and eat the fruits and vegetables that, you know, we mm -hmm. talk about Jesus Christ. You know, the Garden of Eden, we got the Garden of Eden, we got coconuts, we got, there's some people who have land and they're not even growing food. So <laughs> it's like, you know, it's more than food, the food is just the starting point. But the reason why I wrote the book, to be honest with 
you is to leave some breadcrumbs behind. Because I don't ever want people to say, well, you know, hey, yeah, she blew up and she came from Brooklyn and now she in police and she forgot about us. No, I didn't forget about you leave me before I leave you because I left you something. And right. a lot of times, I'm real quick, I don't want to cut you off. A lot of times when people come to me, they be like, yo, yo, sis, yo, how much is the book? I say, well, yo, it's an investment. You know, you invest in yourself. When you go and buy weed or when you go to these fancy restaurants, you see other people going to it, say it's a five-star restaurant. You don't have no problem spending money over there, but you can't invest in yourself. <laughs> right. And now you're going to be bad at me. No health. And you want a discount from me, but you don't do that with Mr. Charlie when you go to Macy's and when you go over there. Okay, I see right. you. When you be buying them designer, them designer and, clothes and spending all that money at the restaurants, you don't be asking for discounts yeah. then. <laughs> right. I'm come to sister girl and then you're going to call me sister, but that's how you're going to do me. And I put blood, sweat, and tears in there and that's for you. It's, it was not for me. And this is, the, this is the thing that I'm having. It, it's all about, for us as a community, there's a lot of trauma and there's a lot of self-hate. And until we deal with the root of the matter, everybody's going to play us because we have an Achilles heel. A lot of us are traumatized. The trauma is what's really dictating the behavior. And until people deal with the why, why are we like this? What is it? We need, a lot of us need healing. And, and, and I grew up in a church where you couldn't go to a therapist. Who don't go to no therapist? Don't be telling nobody, you know, no, no. It was, a, it was, a, shame, it was a shameful yeah. thing. You want, oh, that means you're crazy. You crazy, you want, what's wrong with her? She said she did a therapist. And that's, and that's what we do. We shame each other. Yeah. Even when, when I was going to school, going to college, girl, where you going with them books in your hand? You know, you need to come on and sell some of this weed over here and get this real money, you know? And that's what people have to contend to. And some so people from, need to know, you got to go. Sometimes it takes going to see a counselor to get to the root. That's what I'm saying. Because you what can't I'm, solve the problems on your own. You can't do it by yourself because if you did it by yourself, it would have been done already. Right, exactly. If I, that a lot of us are just too shame um and we and we trying to prove something you know yo 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 and it's all about being tough yeah yeah you know man i'm tough i ain't gonna i'm not gonna drop no dime on nobody it's like what are you talking about that person right. is a bad person they just and it's selling drugs why are you protecting somebody who's who's selling drugs in our community and and you 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 hold that person up to high esteem that and they're killing our community right. but you no it, it's 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 Sometimes our priorities are off and Very we have off. a way to dysfunction and we eat dysfunction. That's why the processed food is making a lot of money. Dysfunction behavior, dysfunction conversation, dysfunction relationship. You doing all of this. You brought these children into the world. You're feeding them McDonald's. You, you, you slapping them. You're hitting them. You know, you don't help them with their homework. Why did you bring them here? Now you're feeding them food that's killing them and you cursing in front of them. Why did you buy? But then you're going to say, this community, these people are, are baby, right? Baby, do better. We have to do better. We have to, charity starts in the home. We have to start loving ourselves so we can love each other. And that's what it boils down to. And when you eat loving, healing food, you check yourself because you get to sit with yourself in nature on your tree. You get to really, really understand why am I here? What, what, what is my purpose in life? Like, no man is an island. It takes a, a, a village to raise a child. And at this particular point, we need to come back to the basics because a lot of us don't have any sense of integrity and we're moving without any sense of principles. So it's the food is the introduction to self-love because what you put in the temple is love. And that's what you're going to get back because somebody can't give you what they don't have. And, I, and, and it's an African saying that says, be very weary of a, a naked man that's trying to offer you a shirt. Beware that's, of a naked man that's trying to offer you. It's deep. Oh, yeah. so, wow. It's deep. It's deep. And so I love my people. I love you. I love everybody. I love me. And just, and I had to work on myself. See, a therapist, I had to work on myself, work on myself so I can love other people. Yeah. So I can love. Yep. You can't, you don't you love nobody else if you don't love yourself. Yeah. So that's where we at. And we, 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 we study blaming other people. Why? We need to fix, we need to work on our own mental health. A lot of us, and I work with people, a lot of people are traumatized and they're too embarrassed to ask for help. Pride cometh before the fall. So I'm, I don't want people to know my business, but then you're out there doing God knows what. You're not taking care of your child. You're sleeping with this person. You got baby daddy drama. 
You ain't got no ring on it. You 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 sleeping with, but you 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 too scared to see a therapist. But you okay with sleeping with everybody on the block and this one's mm. husband. But you don't want to see a therapist. Come on, okay. Now. How's that working for you? <laughs> right. Get yourself together. <laughs> it's deep, deep. It's deep because the, like I said, the food is just. It's the it's the starting point because once you start to eat living food, you start to have real conversations with yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you start to really sit back and ponder on things that you couldn't see before because you're going to be the same person, but you'll start to see things different because you'll start to see the world different because you're starting to change. Yeah, right. And so, and and a lot of times, unfortunately, what happened with me? A lot of people when I started changing, they cut me off. They I I stopped drinking, stopped smoking weed. Um, I stopped going out and doing all this, uh, all this nasty stuff, like really cutthroat stuff, gossiping. Um, and it, it just, after a while, you know, and all of that stuff came back because the fibroids came back. All that, and fibroids for me was a spiritual lesson because I was living foul. So that I was living foul and I, and I was killing myself. So all that energy yeah. I was putting out was in me. Right. So I'm getting away with something. Meanwhile, it's something that's eating me from inside. Mm-hmm. But we all have to be accountable and, and we all have to say like, what part am I playing in this? How can I help and be a part of this beautiful planet? Right. I come with, with, and I can say the pandemic was the best thing that ever happened to us. I'm gonna tell you why. Because that was time for you to sit with yourself. That yep. was time to sit with yourself and everything just shut down. Because left up to our device, we would never have shut down. We would have kept the party going. But just by the mere fact that everything shut down, you had to be with yourself. And it's so funny. Right trifling people booty call this and that this one doing this one this one cheating on his wife got the mistress this and that you know you're the mistress when homie ain't coming back to see you because he's with his wife right now because he's in pandemic he on lockdown but it's a lot of behavior and it's bigger and until we as a as a as a as a as a, as a melanin nation until we do right by each other and do right by it that's why we get treated this way until we take care of our temple until we start living the life we say we want for our children our children are going to suffer. We're right. feeding them. The bottom line is that obesity is, is at an all-time high. We got kids five years old that's obese. Obese. You think that they're going to buy to the grocery store to buy the food? No, it's the parents. No. Their parents are enabling them. Right. So it's like we need to stop playing and just and keep it real. Just stop be playing. real. No, I need some help. Yeah. I, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. And, right. and, and be... Um, so show some humility, being transparent, because I think if we start and take off this false bravado of toughness and you holding on, like even the brothers that go to jail, I grew up with cats that went to jail. And the bottom line is when I knew them when they were kids, they were so innocent. And bottom line is that due to being in the streets, it ate them up. Now they, they, the, 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 and, 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 and even when they come out, you know, they say, yo, one guy on TikTok just came out of jail and he was like, yo, I bought your book. And your book is really helping me. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going in that direction. He said, I did the seven day raw vegan challenge. And he said, basically based on what you just showed me, uh, he said, nobody broke it down to me like that with the book. You kept it real simple. You didn't try to be no PhD. You kept it, you kept it gully. And yeah. that's what's, I'm speaking to people's language because you know what, baby? I am the people. Power to the people. I'm going my- to um, I'm gonna have to go to your website and order your yeah. book. <laughs> myself but i i don't want this to be too long and take up too much of your time but um and thank you for everything you're sharing this is some really good knowledge and and i hope people who are watching are, in, are inspired by everything she's saying and take note take heed <laughs> um your videos i love your videos but you will never do know what i eat in a day i want i want you to do a what i eat in a day and and since you haven't I know you show you'll show a meal um, here, but I want you to show me or tell me a sample of what one day might be. Now I know it's different every day, but just give me a sample of what one day from from breakfast till you go to bed might look. And Mm -hmm. then the last thing is who's your number one inspiration um, in the raw vegan community? And then we'll bring it to a close. Ah. Say that one more time. I got okay. the last one. A sample, a sample of what you eat. Like I know it changes every day, but just a, a, give me a sample, an example. Maybe what you ate yesterday, or or even today. Uh, now, breakfast all the way till dinner. Uh, when I get up, 
uh, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, and I, I don't I don't really tell a lot of people this. I don't because uh, some days it goes by how I feel. Like I know we were brought up to believe that you have to eat this at this time, but I don't eat really when I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm fifty. I'm, I'll be 50, 60. Now it depends on what's what which Delilah you're talking to. Okay. And what by that is that if you're talking to the, the, the Delilah that's 20 years old, she has a different way of eating. I don't need that much food because at 56, I'm going through menopause. So my body, I can live with one meal a day. Okay. And I'm gonna be honest, there are days, and I know people don't want to hear this because it's gonna throw people off with the protein and the B12. Uh, and I took my blood work, and my blood work is amazing. Um, I personally, and I know we, and it's hard because I, I think it's going to really uh, screw people up in the head because it's, it's not going to go with the grain of what we've been taught in school. But I really go with, with spirit. I go, I don't eat if I'm not hungry. Like if I get up in the morning, I'll have some coconut water um, to, to hydrate me. Um, but otherwise, that's after a workout. Sometimes I'll just go into a workout and I'll eat after the workout or I'll have like a smoothie. Or, or for dinner, I'll have like a whole watermelon and I'll just go to bed. And that's the tr truth. My body is different um, because you're going through perimenopause, so you're still getting a cycle. Um, as you go through the tra kinda, transformation- Kind of, it's a little yeah, very irregular. <laughs> my body tells me what it needs and I listen. I listen to my body and I, and I think, and it's a metaphor for life because I, I spent a lot of time listening to everybody outside of myself and a lot of times I got in trouble for that I should have listened to my gut but now at 55 I'm, I'm listening to my internal spirit so my internal body says hey we're hungry and this is what we want I'll I'll eat what my body tells me but that being obsessed just eating eating food all the time and as I've, I've been raw there's a such thing as breatharians like people who gravitate towards that uh, I, I think for me right now and I feel it that I'm not I'm consuming food, but not as much as I used to. So, and even when I'm working out, I haven't lost any muscle fiber. I dropped a lot of inflammation and fat. Um, I don't know if it's genetic for me, but I have no problem gaining muscle mass. Um, my brother's the same way. And my yeah. mom is, yeah. So for us, I saw you know, your yolks. I saw your yolks. <laughs> yeah, pull ups and stuff like that. So I don't get caught up in, oh, I'm 55 and I can't do pull-ups and I can't do push-ups and I can't bench press. I throw all the rules out the window and I just listen to my spirit. Mm -hmm. you, you know eat, what I'm saying? So do you, are you a fruit, do you eat a fruit-based diet or do you eat greens I, and, as well? And greens, I eat cabbage, I eat kale, we grow arugula, um, collard greens, we have collard greens wrapped, lentils, I just made some lentils, I just made a pad thai. I had a, a meal, I had a meal a workshop where four weeks I did a meal a workshop with people where I made the food and they made it with me. So I just finished that class at eight o'clock. Um, but I, I, I eat greens, I eat uh, oranges, pineapples. I'll, sometimes I'll have a mono meal, like this could be a meal for me. Yeah, and right. I, Yeah, so it, the rules change when you start to drop programs. When you, you kind of get out of the matrix, I know this sounds crazy, but once you're, you start to move in a certain frequency, you're higher, you're resident, your energy is higher. You don't need as much food as you did when you was 20 or when you're following that whole move. You should be eating this at this time. And because you, once you start saying to yourself, you program, it's nine, it's 12 o'clock. It's like Pablo's conditioning with the dogs. So every time Pablo's dogs, the conditioning, you know, Pablo. Yeah, I remember that. Well, it's just, it's a, it's, it's how the, because the human mind could be easily um, um, trained like a dog. Yeah. But I, he did, he would ring a bell. Right. And, the and then it would drool or something. And they would start salivating. Yeah. And so every time they salivated, they knew that they, every time they heard the bell to run because it was food. Right. So right. Um, every time they heard that bell, they were just, you know, used to food, food. So it conditioned them. So I think we, we have been conditioned um, through time. Um, to say breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But a lot of times, and even people that did my seven day raw vegan challenge, they said, I want to thank you. And I said, well, for what? Because you didn't force me to eat when I, didn't, when I wasn't hungry. You made me feel comfortable with my body. You're the first person I ever made that, that I ever met that made me feel okay with not eating so much. Just, I just don't, some people don't want to eat breakfast. They don't. Right. Don't and eat so, if you ain't hungry. If you ain't hungry, don't eat. <laughs> I don't want to force yourself um, if you're not hungry, because some of you, you it's, it's, it's unnatural to be forcing things down your throat. 
Yeah. It's just natural. So people say, you know, hey, you, you kicked it in a different way. Um, I never met anybody like you. You kind of just threw everything in a different direction. And I appreciate that. Now, who's my favorite person in the raw vegan world? Uh, I'm going to say my girl, and you interviewed her, Dr. Toomey. Oh, yeah. I I'm love gonna Toomey. Say, Dr. Toomey. Yeah, Dr. Toomey, because Toomey, Dr. Toomey is sweet. She is. Um, see, I, have, um, I had some stuff, some uh, vertigo, and she helped me with that. Um, and I made her wedding ring. So I'm also a jewelry designer. Oh, I, oh. I, make a, that I, I, I graduated from Pratt Institute and I have a Bachelor of Fine Art. So I'm also a welder. I, I design jewelry, set diamonds and stuff. So she bought, I made her, her and her husband's wedding ring. And we've been oh. since. So we, we have a, you know, circles, you know, and she's somebody I can honestly say that I hold up the highest self-esteem. Esteem. Also, she has, she moved in a sense of integrity. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's not, like, I know I, David Wolf, and I know all the other stuff, because what I was coming up, it was a bunch of white cats, and they was running the seed. It wasn't that many of us Black folks coming. So it's refreshing to, to see Toomey, and to see even Iris. Like, Iris is doing his thing, you know? So it's a couple yeah, of us right. that, you know Iris, that I can say that, well, definitely Toomey for me is on, on top of the charts for me, as far as she is a woman of her word. If she yeah. says she something she's going to do it and she's so sweet because i saw the interview that you did with her and yeah. um i was like damn am i going to be sweet like like to me i said nah. <laughs> i said nah i'm going to be me I'm gonna be <laughs> i like about me and not to be narcissistic i like that i take you to the hood like yeah. like a lot of times people be thinking oh you need a phd and you know what's up i came from public assistance baby and i think people need to see that that and there's a lot of us that grew up in the hood that don't feel that we are worth that be in that circle because you know I grew up on welfare and I and I want people to know that no just because you grew up there that doesn't mean anything right. that doesn't make you are it's not where you where you where you started it's where you go it doesn't you doesn't define yeah. you and, I, and, and you know um to people to to, to to step out on faith and be like and I grew up my mother's a minister I grew up with a in a church Pentecostal so I am that person that grew up in a, on welfare with my mom on welfare. I am that person that knows about bodegas, bodegas. I know about smoking weed and drinking alcohol and going all of that stuff. But you can change. Yeah. You don't have to stay that way. You no. know what I'm saying? I stopped drinking alcohol, gave it up, stopped smoking weed, stopped all that stuff, you know, even going to the clubs and picking up somebody doing, you know what I'm saying? Hey! Are was, you helping people? Helping people thrive in their life. You're an author. You're a physical yeah. trainer. Look at you. You're just doing all kind of stuff. And you a jewelry maker. <laughs> yeah. like, and a welder. No. Yeah, you, so you're doing big it. things. I just want to say to all my people in the struggle, um, keep your head up. Keep your head up. Thank you so much. You Thank so you, Delilah. <laughs> I'm just going to, uh, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you were inspired. Make sure you follow Delilah. I will have all her information in the description along with her website. Please go to her website, check out her book. I'm actually going to go and purchase her book myself, depending <laughs> on how much it is. No, I'm, just right. <laughs> I'm just playing. And don't be asking for no discounts, y'all, because y'all don't be asking for no Girl. discounts when you want to buy your little uh, coach bags. But anyway. Um, so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video. <laughs> thank you, Delilah. I appreciate you. You too. Tell your sister I'm going to be hitting her up and don't be ignoring my message. No. Yeah. I'm going to tell my sister that. <laughs> oh, did you see, um, I had also interviewed Dr. Arise. Did you see that one? No, I got to see that one today. I saw Toomey though, because I was like, oh, Toomey's in there. I let me watch my sister. I'm surprised yeah. you didn't see the one, Dr. Aris. He was the one that had the most views out of all my interviews. <laughs> okay, oh, I'm starting this where everybody he's been doing it since the 70s. Yeah, it's a long. He's like the uh, what do you call it? The the legend of the raw vegan community. You know, he is the he's like the god of the raw vegan community. So right. he's yeah. I gotta check him out today. I'll check him out today. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you all right sis you have a have a good day bless you bless you all right blessing bye all right bye sweet